Okay, I think there's a few people to come back in the room, but I think we'll get underway. Um, hopefully everybody enjoyed what I think was a, a really nice lunch, and judging by the level of noise in the room, some very good conversations. So uh, that's a really good part of the day, and hopefully everybody enjoyed that. I am mindful talking to several people that uh, what we have is, I know there's some severe travel issues today, so we will give due process to all of our our awards that we have coming up this afternoon, but uh, in recognition that I know one or two of you are going to have to slip away a little bit early uh, for various trains and various travel as we move forward. So without further ado, I'd like to sort of move into the main part of, of the day, and one of the reasons we're here is to celebrate um, achievement in the industry. Now traditionally, this has been an award ceremony for our students at Derby University in the Centre for Mineral Products, and we'll come on to that in a moment. But um, before we get on to, to that part of the day, I think it's uh, what we're going to do is, is celebrate the Emerald Challenge, which I think for, from the IQ's perspective is a particularly important uh, new uh, event for us in terms of taking ourselves into the next phase of uh, what we do as an industry and a sector. I've put my glasses on, so it's serious. I've got to read this bit rather than freeform it for a change. Um, in particular, I'm particularly pleased to be introducing the new award for the Institute. Um, to give you a bit of background, this started from a conversation probably back in 2021 with Steve Cole, one of our members, uh, when he suggested the concept of an award to recognise efforts of members and the industry in driving forward the sustainability agenda. Um, we all know it's a critical, a critical area for the industry, society at large, and we have to play our part in that, and already are in many ways, but we all know that we need to do more. I really want to thank Steve, um, not only for the initial idea, and the uh, grant money donation that's put forward for this particular year's uh, uh, grants for, for the winners. Um, but also for his patience, because as I say, we started the conversation back in 2021. It's taken us a, a little while to get to this point where we're actually making the awards of the grant. But I think um, the process has been really valuable and I think taking that time, we've got to the right outcome. And hopefully it's the start of something that's really important, significant for us as a, an institute, for our members, and again, just reinforces the importance of us as a membership body, that we're a collective group of people with a passion and interest and expertise in the sector. And people coming forward like Steve, presenting these kinds of ideas as how we end up at this position today. Um, so I think just again, thanks to Steve, I think it's really worthwhile to recognize his efforts and contribution at this point on that. For those of you who are not familiar with the award, it's worth perhaps just setting out what our ambition is. As I've said, we know that sustainability and decarbonisation decarbonization have become the leading agenda for our society. The climate emergency is driving policies that support a circular economy, to be more efficient with our energy use and of resources and improve biodiversity. The mineral products industry will play a critical role in developing solutions that will put the UK on track to meeting its objective to be net zero carbon by 2050. In line with the COP27 agreement and the UN Sustainable Development Goals. The Emerald Challenge was created to support, recognise IQ members as they develop projects and research ideas to help their organisations and the wider industry meet those global challenges. The Emerald Challenge is a grant of £5,000 to be awarded annually to an IQ technical member, member or fellow to develop ideas that directly contribute towards that net zero carbon uh, agenda. The award covers projects that are developing new processes or concepts to help deliver better performance or delivering existing technologies with a new context for the sector. For example, development of a research proposal for new developments in sustainability, development of an existing idea to an implementation phase, implementation of a process system within an organization, implementation of a campaign delivering improved sustainability and environmental performance. This is the first year that we've held this award uh, and I think we can say that we're extremely pleased with the level of response we had uh, as a first go, given that people perhaps don't quite understand what the award's for, what we're trying to achieve through it, but actually the responses we had at the initial phase and application phase was really heartening and I think gives us a great hope that we can drive this and, and grow this as we move forward. The judging panel were tasked with whittling the applicants down to a shortlist and then invited, who were invited to present their concepts in more detail to the judging panel. But I think it's fair to say the original uh, intention was to grant an award to just one winner.
but through that process and the discussions and debate among the judges, who I can say I think it was probably quite lively. I wasn't involved in the judging process myself, but having talked to a number of the judges individually, uh, quite clearly there were a number of uh, differing viewpoints in and around the, the various applications, which is great because it shows uh, the passion and interest from, from the judges uh, and actually the quality of the submissions that were made. But in the end, after all of that, they couldn't actually finally separate the, uh, the final two entries. And so we decided in our first year that we'd split that grant between two applications. One of those is a project focusing on reducing CO2 emission in hard rock quash quarries, and another that involves pollution control and water management. And both of those will receive two and a half thousand pounds grant to take their projects to the next stage. At this point, I'd like to invite uh, Viv Russell as president of the IQ and Steve Cole as the initiator, initiator of the project uh, to join me on stage for the awards. I'll ask you two guys to stand there in front of this bit here. That would be great. So, the uh, first successful application is from Thomas Clifford, director of Gears Limited, and Oliver Kibble, from a quarry, quarry development manager at Tarmac which focuses on reducing CO2 emissions in hard rock quarries through enhanced blasting fragmentation. The project's objectives include measuring various parameters during a baseline blast, designing a new blast for improved fragmentation, and then remeasuring the parameters for the improved blast. The potential impact of the project will help towards reducing emissions and achieving cost savings. The overall feedback from the judges felt the holistic approach of the project was a particular strength. So I can, can ask Oliver and Thomas to come to the stage and receive their awards from uh, Viv and uh, Steve. I think uh, the second uh, grant will show the diversity and range of ideas that we have put forward by members uh, and again shows the strength of, of a membership organisation where people uh, perhaps take concepts from different areas and, and can apply it in a new way that perhaps nobody else has thought of before um, and is a great example of simplicity is brilliant in my opinion. Um, so the second grant goes to Andrew Gould, civil, civil engineer at Forestry and Land Scotland. Uh, who proposed a project that involves pollution control and water management in Scotland's central region. It aims to find an environmentally friendly and cost-effective solution for managing silt during timber haulage road construction projects. Its plan includes extensive research testing across different regions of Scotland using sustainable materials known for sed sediment capture. The judges acknowledged that this is idea should be supported so that it can reach its full development potential as the impact of the sector could be significant. And it was also felt that the impact of this particular project is not only for our own sector, but could be seen across a much wider range of sectors. Again, an example where we have the opportunity to show that our industry can lead these kinds of ideas in critical areas. So I'd like to invite Andrew to the stage to receive his award. say this is the first year of the Emerald Challenge but I'm hoping that we'll see many more uh, iterations of this 
of this over the coming years because I think it, we all know it's a critical area. We all know the industry is doing a lot of great things in, in this particular space. And I think it's particularly important for us to be able to showcase that and show what a great industry we have um, and challenge some of those perhaps misconceptions that are out there about what we do as a sector as a whole. So that concludes the uh, Emerald Challenge, and now we're moving on to perhaps what you might consider the main business of the day, which is the Student Awards. So I'm afraid you're going to have to bear with me for a little bit longer as I ramble on incoherently at you for a little bit longer before, before the real people turn up and tell you things in a proper way. Um, so if we move on to the Student Awards, so I think it's just again reminding ourselves that this is the product of a lot of people's really hard work over a number of years, both the students themselves, the support from their employers, and not least the guys on the table over there sat on table number nine from uh, the Centre for Mineral Products who I have the pleasure of knowing um, personally and know their passion and commitment to our sector. Uh, and I think somebody referred to it earlier on. You know, it's been the jewel in our crown for many, many years and may that continue for many more years because they are a fantastic example of the passion that our industry has in, in sharing knowledge and developing skills and talents as we move forward. So without further ado, I'll move on to the first award winner. And it does work, so that's, that's a relief. So the first award is the Goodwin Bardsby Award for the best honours student. It's covering two years and five modules, which uh, include advanced mineral products technology, operations management, resource management, financial commercial management, and a work-based project. John Austin, as, as the lecturer, has said, having completed his foundation degree in 2020 with a distinction, Lewis then moved on to the BSc Honours in January 2021. He was awarded a first-class degree and, tame, and came top of what was an outstanding cohort of stu students. And again, I think it's worth reinforcing that in the sense that I think uh, this year was the most uh, number of firsts we had from a cohort of students, which again is a testament to both the students themselves, the industry and the teaching staff. So to come out on top of that is a fantastic achievement. The commitment and engagement Lewis has shown throughout the programme has been immense, culminating in a work-based project that resolved a significant challenge within one of the major local mineral operators. We are all very proud of the fantastic achievement by Lewis. John McGough is chair of uh, Derbyshire IQ. I've known Lewis for four years. He's based at Tunster Quarry in Cement Works. It has been a pleasure to see him and his career develop during his time at UOD, IQ and CRH into a well-rounded individual. He has been joint deputy chair for the Derbyshire IQ branch for the last 18 months and is doing a fantastic job. We all wish him well in his future career. So I'd like to invite Viv back to the stage uh, to present the award, and I'd also like to invite Lewis to the stage to receive his award from Viv. So the next award is the Reginald W. Coles Prize. Um, and the award recognizes the best overall student over eight modules from all three years of the uh, Mineral Extractive Student FD Award, Foundation Degree. And the modules include construction materials, technology, engineering one, two, and three, mathematics, industry technology, mineral extractives and transport, minerals management and processing, which is the double module, lasting operations, and business management. Of this particular candidate, Chris Rowan said, Peter should be seen as one of the foremost success stories, certainly in my eight years at C4MP. Winning the IQ awards for three years in succession clearly shows Peter's determination and dedication to both his career and lifelong learning. Peter achieved an astonishing 96% average for his three years with the C4MP, excelling in everything he did which included his performances in all-time open book assessments. When we consider that all our students are in full-time, often demanding roles, most have family commitments and a life outside of work and education, graduating with one of the centre's qualifications is no mean feat. Peter's performance should be seen as what can be achieved by, with hard work and dedication. 
And I think Peter himself said of, he uh, experienced the tools that Derby University has given me over the last three years, I'm sure will help me with any challenges I face in the future. So can I invite Peter Trickus to the stage to receive his award from Viv. So next we're to the Ransoms Rapier Award uh, for the best mineral extractives hire apprenticeship. The award recognises the highest achieving HA Minerals Products Technician Extractives Pathway student over eight modules and three open book exams. And these include introduction to mineral products, personal learning and thinking skills, intro to extractives technology, frontline supervisory management, minerals processing and minerals management including blasting operations as well. David Hindmarsh said, Ben has consistently produced excellent work throughout his two year apprenticeship. In year one, Ben was part of a team that won the Minerals Engineering Society Award for student success for an outstanding academic poster on mental health. During his second year, Ben achieved an average of 90% over 14 assignments and three exams, an outstanding achievement. Paul Campion, Ben's manager at MQP, Ben should be proud both his academic and professional achievements and continues to be a valued member of the team here at Cliff Hill. So again, if I could invite Ben Marsh to the stage, he'll be awarded his prize. So our next award is the Peter Preston Award, which recognises the best mineral extractives diploma student from the UK. The diploma is a one year certificate based on three industry, industry specific modules, minerals management and processing, mineral extractives and transportation, and blasting operations. Again, Chris Rowan said, taking on an extra module above the normal three, Oliver has excelled in all four modules, achieving an overall grade in excess of 90%. Particular note were his performances in mineral extractive and transportation and minerals management and processing. It should also be noted both of these subjects include a three hour open book assessment where he excelled. Well done, Oliver. It would be nice to see you be back here at C4MP. <laughs> Not that you're encouraging him, Chris, no, but I think Oliver himself said of the course, I thoroughly enjoyed the Derby University Diploma in Mineral Extractives. The course has provided me with increased knowledge and understanding of the industry and operations. The teaching staff at Derby University have supported me throughout my studies and their personal experiences within the industry make the workshop sessions engaging and interesting. So again, for the second time this afternoon, I'd like to invite Oliver Kibble to come back to the stage and receive his award. Right, we're moving on to the uh, Longcliffe Calcium Carbonates Award. So I'd like to invite Chris Wainwright from Longcliffe to join Viv on stage for these presentations, if I may. So we have two awards from Longcliffe this afternoon. Um, the first is for the Longcliffe Award for Best Performing Mineral Extractives Foundation Degree Year 2 student. The award recognises the best overall foundation degree student over four modules. These include construction products technology, engineering two, industry technology, and mineral extractives and transportation. Again, Chris Rowan's comments on this particular candidate, another good performance this year from Joseph, whose average grades throughout the year have kept him well in the distinction bracket. Of note are his performances in construction products technology and mineral extractives and transportation. 
We are sure Joseph will excel in his final year and look forward to welcoming him back to C4MP. Joseph said of his own experience, the Mineral Extractors Foundation degree has helped provide an excellent understanding of the industry on a whole and helped me to build a network of support to develop my, to develop me in my chosen career path. So I'd like, without further ado, to invite Joseph Dodds from Breeden to the stage, please. Is he here? No? Ah, he's not here. Oh, okay. In which case, because I think the other one's not here as well. But we'll, 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 yeah. oh. Is that train? Is that the train related? Yeah. Oh, well, you got out of that. Yeah. Stand down, chaps. You're all right. There you go. Um, but we will take that through. We know that there are various travel issues for some people here today. So, um, so the final award from, from the IQ uh, today is the Longcliffe Calcium Carbonates Awards for year one F3 student. Um, and again, this recognises the best overall foundation degree student over three modules, which include engineering, mathematics, industry, introduction, learning and thinking, study skills, and industry and the environment. It's recognised that the first year of a foundation degree can, for some, be the hardest. Being away from education for some time, both math ma mathematics and engineering can be difficult subjects to ease students back into academia. It can then be seen that motivating students can be challenging. Um, Chris has said, Alice has been a joy to teach. She is a very active student who shows enthusiasm in all she does. Always present throughout the year, she has performed exceptionally well in all her first four modules and overall average in excess of 90%. Of particular note is her efforts in both engineering and maths and industry intro introduction. We eagerly await the return of Alice for a second year at the centre. Unfortunately, I think Alice is one of the casualties of the travel today, so um, we'll make sure that she gets her award uh, at some point in the future. Um, but that concludes the awards from the IQ today. I think we can all agree that it's a fantastic representation of some real talent in our sector. Um, and huge congratulations to all of them. And again, huge congratulations to uh, C4MP. But I'll hand over to Lyle now, who will take you through the winners from the IAT.